we take the next video on surface integrals surface integrals and let's look at the introduction to surface integrals i've already shown you this image on slide one where we have a curve and a surface this implies that if i'm on a 3d plane as some z x and then y i can have a x sorry i can have a curve on this plane I can also have the entire surface drawn on this plane. In that case, here is a curve and here is an entire surface on the plane. If I'm integrating or looking at the work done along the curve, then I'm looking at a line integral. We've already defined line integrals as integration over a curve. The work done by a surface is called a surface integral. In that case, we can look at some difference between line integrals and surface integrals. The first obvious thing is that for the line integral, we are integrating over a curve and this over a surface. What else can we see? Now with the parametric curves, we know we have to define the curves. We use one parameter under the line integral. And it's mostly defined by some t. And the surface, we use two parameters. I can define this by u and then some v. Why two parameters? If I'm looking at a surface on x, y, z plane, projection can be done on x, z plane, y or x, y plane, and then it can be on x, y, z plane. So it means I need two parameters to define these projections. Then the integral is a single integral. This integral is a double integral because it's two parameters. It means my domain here is simply my dr. My domain here will be my dA because it's two. It can be du dv or dv du. However you define these terms, it is how the limits of the integrations will be defined. Now what are the functions? The function is f. The function is also under f here over a surface s over a curve c now one interesting thing we must note here is that because it's a surface if i draw a tangent line so let me have here if i draw a surface like this and i take the tangent line touching the a, a point on a surface it will be i can find a perpendicular distance or the normal to that tangent plane and so it means that I can only find a small change in that point and that's given by the end let's take an example here or a further description of this surfaces so I told the projection can be on X Y plane it can be on x z plane and then y z plane this means that z is a function of x y this means y is a function of z x and this means that x will be a function of y z whichever plane you want to take you are good to go so assuming i have a surface z defined as a function of x and then some y i know i need to define the parametric surface r to be some u some v and then some f okay now if i want to find a normal don't forget under the line integral we said if it's a scalar function my r prime of t is given as the norm well, let me see my dr is given by the norm it's the same approach here we still have the norm of the r derivative but why can't i use prime i can't use prime because here is more than one parameter the first one was just r of t so i can simply write r prime of t because here is more than one i can't have it as r prime I can have it as R subscript U, R subscript V, 
and so on and so forth. Okay. So it means I can have it this as the partial of my R, the norm, not the prime, as it is here. This is correct, but this can only be so it will only be the partial of U and then V. And I've explained why it is partial, it is more than two variables. So this is the same as finding the norm of the partial of u crossing the partial of v this is r my r and v is almost the same so r u crossing because it's a normal vector they are crossing the tangent plane from both planes how do you find cross of polynomials or vectors it is not a dot it is a cross so it means i have some i j k the first respect to u here i'll get one respect to u i'll get zero for the j and then respect to f i'm going to get f of u if i take the second part respect to v i'm going to get zero here one here and then f respect to v because f is a function of x and y this is a determinant so if I have i out, I'll have 0 f of u, 1 f of v, minus j out, 1 f of u, 0 f of v, plus k out, I'm going to get 1, 0, 0, 1. I'm finding the determinant. And so realize I'm going to get here as i times f of u minus j of f of v plus k of 1 this is the same as writing it as f of u f of v and then 1 if i don't use the ij case these are showing the directional vectors of whatever i have so in that case, the norm of my R U crossing R V is simply the square root of U square, V square, and then one square, which is still one. This is what I have. So we're writing my definition for surface integral. F dot N D A is going to be the surface integral of F of that parametric uv the square root of f of u square f of v square plus one da okay so then we can take examples now let me take a new sheet So my double integral of f, then the normal is giving us the double integral f over the parametric surface, the norm of f u squared, f v squared plus 1 v a. Now this surface can be over z, y, and then x, any of it go. It means I can use equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. When my da's are defined by equation four, this is not difficult to do. Okay. So let's take the first example. We want to evaluate the surface of the plane. The surface S is on a portion lining the first octant. The plane is given as two x plus y plus z is equal to two. This is a surface. So I need to know which proje projection I want to take. Let's assume I want to take it on z. It means z should be a function of x and then y. This will be equal to 2 minus 2x minus y, if I'm correct. You remember how we find the limits of integration for double integrals over general surfaces? If I set z to be 0, I'm going to get my y to be equal to 2 minus 2x. If I set this to 0, equal to 2 minus 2x. And I can find x to be 1.
that will be 2x equal to 2 and so x equal to 1 and so the limit of integration is going to be x between 0 and 1 and then y between 0 and then 2 minus 2x okay that is it so it means that my double integral is going to be 0 to 1 0 to 2 minus 2x dy dx don't forget i'm signing it at you now what will be my f it is 3z so 3 into bracket z z is defined by this representation star so 2 minus 2x minus y what is my norm now my norm will become the square root of f respect to x square and then f respect to y squared plus 1. This is the same as saying z respect to x plus z respect to y plus 1. Now I know my z. z from equation star. If I'm differentiating respect to x, I'm going to get negative 2. So that will be negative 2 squared. That's 4. If I'm differentiating z respect to y, I'm going to get negative 1. This is my z. And that will be 1 squared, which is 1 plus 1. So this is the root of 6, if I'm not wrong. So this times root of 6, and then you find whatever evaluation you must do. As simple as that. If I want a second example, let me use a black pen. You want to find... A surface given by z dx which is on a circle such that the surface is parameterized as When my surface z is defined as some 4 minus x squared minus y squared, you want to define the surface integral. What can you do? For here, you realize that it is already given as z equal to some function of x and then y. Okay. But because it's a circle, it is defined on a circle, you simply have to move to a polar coordinate. So this is the same as 4 minus s squared plus y squared. This is 4 minus r squared. So if I want to find r, r is going to be square 4. r will be plus or minus 2. This is a radius of 0 to 2. Since it's a full circle, it means my theta run from 0 to 2 pi. So simply, I can rewrite this surface integral as 0 to 2 0 to 2 pi and then my z which is 4 minus r squared now what is my norm my norm is going to be so i have it as the r d theta my norm here is going to be z respect to r z respect to theta z respect to r i'm going to get 2 r Z respect to theta, I'm going to get 0. It means that I have square root of 4R squared plus 0 squared plus 1, which is simply 4R squared plus 1. So I have 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2, 4 minus R squared times 4R squared plus 1 the r the theta you must expand this and evaluate i'm taking the last example on surface integral let me see i've i've solved for this one okay let's take z that's what i just did okay the last example here is quite complex so I'll take a simple one from my other note where I want to integrate the surface of x, z, dx 
where I have the surface defined by x plus y plus z equal to 1. Here I want to define z to be 1 minus x minus y. So if I have it as 0 here, 1 minus x minus y, I can say my y is simply 1 minus x. If I set it to 0, I'll have x to be equal to 1. So it means my limit of integration here is going to be 0 to 1, 0 to 1 minus x. Then you know that you're simply having the y word dx over your norm. Now what will be your integrand? x remains, z is defined as this. So I make a substitution. That will be x into bracket 1 minus x minus y. So my norm here becomes the square root of z respect to x square, z respect to y square plus 1. This will be equal to z respect to x is negative 1, so 1 square. z respect to y is 1, so 1 square plus 1. This is the square root of 3. It means you multiply, you have to solve the integrand as 0 to 1, 0 to 1 minus x x into bracket 1 minus x minus y times the square root of 3 dy dx and this is what you must solve i didn't solve to the final stage but what you must do to know how you can represent your surface integral from a line integral the last unit will be on the vector theorems so stay tuned for videos on that